Hi, today we're going to talk about the properties of a rhombus. Now, a rhombus is a type of parallelogram um, with four sides that are all congruent to each other. But it shares all the other same properties of a parallelogram. Now, what are those properties? We have opposite sides that are going to be both parallel to each other and congruent. We have um, opposite angles are going to be congruent. The... Uh, Two angles next to each other are consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. We have diagonals that when they cross each other, they bisect into two equal parts, two equal parts. Um, and now what else happens? Well, the rhombus specifically, we have four sides that are congruent, not just opposite sides that are congruent. They're all going to be congruent. Um, and our diagonals, they also, they bisect but they also form a right angle here in the middle. So let's use that to solve with whatever we've got going on here. Uh, let's start with angles, then we're gonna move to the sides. Um, but I always like filling in all the information that I can find before I answer anything. Let's just fill in all of our work. So we start with angle one is 25. Cool, that means angle two here also has to be 25. Now opposite Angles are going to be uh, the same. So if this is 50, this is 50. This gets bisected into two equal parts. So that's 25 and 25. Uh, we have a 90 degrees here in the middle. And we need to figure out what 7, 8, 3, and 4 are. Now, we know that, I guess, let's look at that. Um, angle 7, 8. And one and two added together, they're supplementary. So they give us 180 degrees. I already have 50. So if I'm looking at 180 minus 50, I'm left with 130. That 130 has to get split evenly because this diagonal bisects that angle. So what is half of 130 divided by two? We're going to say 50, 65. 65 and 65, and now our angles opposite that have to be the same thing. So we say 65 and 65 again. So let's, we labeled out all of our angles. Let's put them down on with what we're looking for. Measure of angle two, all the way down there, 25. A, B, C, A, B, C. So the whole big angle, that's gonna be 50. Three and four are both 65 and 65. And then BAD, BAD, we're talking about the big angle, seven and eight together. That'll be 130. All right, so that's angles. What about uh, lengths of sides and diagonals and all that stuff? So let's try it again. So FJ, let's label what we know and let's fill in everything else. FJ here in the middle is going to give us three. FG is five. I know that if one side is five, all sides are gonna be five. I know if this half of the diagonal is three, this half also has to be three. Now, we need to figure out this last diagonal, the vertical one here. Okay, so we have a right angle, that's good, uh, which means we also have a right triangle in here. Now, if you go back to properties of triangles, if you have two sides, you can find your missing third side. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean theorem to help us out. We could take three, plug it in for a, x, plug it in for b, five, plug it in for c, because that's our hypotenuse across from the right angle, largest side. Or we could skip all that and just kind of go with our special uh, three, four, five. It's a special pattern going on with this. So that has to be a four right there. That's four, that's four. So it's always good to kind of know a little extra information. This way, sometimes we don't have to do all of our work. Now that we have everything labeled, let's see what we have to find. GJ, GJ, four. GH, five. JH, three. And GI, top to bottom, four plus four, gives us eight. And that is properties of rhombus, both angles and lengths.